Light it up. Getting ready to install the timing set, and there's a wrong way and a right way to install these. As you'll notice here, there's a front side and a back side. How can you easily tell the front from the back? Well, the back's going to have this beveled edge. In one video where I did this, I didn't show it very well. So, beveled edge goes towards the crank. Right here, there's a dot, and a dot, unless you got some weird keyway thing going on. Is there's the keyway and there's the dot okay so this is the front side this should be facing the radiator your bevel side should be showing to the crank at this point we're going to use a torch to heat up the gear just so we can slide it on so we don't have to bang up no bearings it just goes on smooth gives a good little smoke show and uh, pretty much is the quickest and safest way we've found to do this over the years light it up Last time doing this, we figured I said 350 degrees. I was wrong. It's really about 190 to 250 degrees. It will slide on. And this engine's really cold, which is going to shrink the crank. So between it being a little warmer and the crank being a little colder, it should go on nice and smooth. There you go. Yeah, you got a ways to go yet. Yep. You really you want to get the center ring hot that's what really needs to be expanded is the center but he's working his way out to come in so it kind of also forges it too makes it also harder okay the gear roughly right now is about 150 Okay, we got the gear hot enough. We're gonna go and uh, gonna go ahead and install the gear at this time. That works right. Yep. That'll work. Very good. The quick and dirty way. Dirty way as usual. Alright, chain installed. Alright, you want to line up your cam gear. We already have the bottom lined up. The front or the cam may not line up because of how the chain was off, and we'll have to rectify that if that's the case. Now we're just going to squeeze it somehow, pop it on. There. It's on. Strong. Oh, this one bolt hole is just giving me a little trouble. I know these are the correct bolts because I kept the cam bolts away from everything. I have to get new bolts. No, the hole, for some reason, it's kind of like shifted. This way, and just go like that. Did you tighten up the other two? No, they're loose. No, it's because it needs to go like just a little bit. You better grab some Loctite for those. Okay. Now that I got this one in, yeah. Do you know what, do you remember what the torque was for these? 20 pounds. Really? Yes. For the cam gear? Yes. That's interesting. I mean, I 18 in some literature. <laughs> what? 18 in some literature. Uh, if, it just... has, if it has a lock plate, it's 18. That... Now some GM 350s will have a lock plate. I'll show some pictures of it. Or they'll have some type of way of the bolts locking. This one locks by um, spider locks doesn't use an actual thrust plate or 
a button plate doesn't use none of that now we already ran the bolts down we don't want to use Loctite yet until we actually get the cam gear aligned depending if you're off or not this motor is straightened right up but if you weren't you can use a little pry bar and get it whichever direction you're off I didn't get to do it this time because again this motor was lined up but if we get one in I'll show you the trick next time we're always doing cam gears it seems like or chains or something especially with Chevy's they like to eat chains probably have a 3.8 coming in here pretty soon with the same split chain problem the last one to go in sometimes can be a little bit of a fight because the gear will try to walk on you a little bit so just be patient leave everything loose until you're ready to do your final torque Alright, 20 foot pounds, and away you go. 18 if you have lock plates. Should be really using a short on that code. I am. Oh, well, this is my impact one. Oh, okay. It's tapered. Yes. If you didn't have a tapered set, you don't want to use a deep socket when you're setting torque on these. You want to run them down just to get everything to sit back in its rested location. See now this one's starting to be easier to get. Yeah, it's just because when you're getting the chain, it's actually a double roller. It will fight on you on one hole. You're lucky this time you didn't have to line it with the pipe though, man. First couple chains I ever did, man, I was four or eight degrees off and I didn't align anything. I left it to the slop, thought, oh, I'll just put it on later. Yeah, I appreciate now my tips and tricks. The first one was tough, but these are all cinched now. Give me any problem, I'll get it figured out. I didn't think this chain was as bad as it was though. It just made me wonder the other day when I was driving my truck how bad my chain is. <laughs> I'm thinking, because what you'll get when these chains start getting sloppy, you'll be going up a hill and all of a sudden your engine will just feel flat, like there's no torque there. You're going up the hill but it doesn't feel like you're producing good power and that's a telltale sign your chain is stretched. Well I thought this was producing good power. <laughs> Yeah, when the chain was everything was lined up, you won't know. And then it's the other times when you get the little drivability, like to get the weird idle and to not want to start and the weird flame outs. And even though you put a new distributor in and new carburetor. See that? I'm nice and tight now. Nice. So, Kev, okay, have you ever been beat yet? Uh, I gotta think about that. So Wait, you can blame it on the chain now, so go ahead. Mm, no, I'm trying to think. Because uh, you were still beating Subarus with this. Yeah, no, I lost one race. Um, I'll have to think about that one. The only thing I'm concerned about is it looks like the chain's pretty close to... It's a very tight tolerance, dude. Well, what you're supposed to do now is you need to bar this motor over twice. All right, now we're going to test this again with the bottom versus the timing. Because that's really where you're going to be able to actually see it without doing a major teardown, is from doing a bottom rock to a top. If you look at the mark. Yeah, the mark's where it should be. I, was, I don't know, this chain looks pretty freaking close to the block, dude. It is, Kev. The first time I ever did one, I thought, how did they get that in there? But they managed to do it. No slop at all. Look at that. Should be much harder, too. Oh, hear that compression. That is my favorite thing about... <laughs> oh, boy.
boy, she's got compression now. Listen Good to that. Good thing I just gapped those spark plugs that I'm putting in at 35. It sounds like a turbo. Luke, I am your father. I don't know, whoever built this motor knew what they were doing. Come on, Kev, you can do it. I wonder if we'll hit that 18 pounds of vacuum yet. <laughs> Thank you.